I got you. Uh, so we're local arts advocates and my inspiration um, to get into arts advocacy and community building came from an event very similar to this, which is why I like to pay it back and pay it forward and keep the event free and bring in uh, brilliant minds, thought leaders, entrepreneurs, artists, cartoonists, and, uh, and anybody with a thought-provoking, inspiring story to share their story with you and with Andrew's background, having been um, president of the American Advertising Federation for many years and helping uh, advocate for folks in uh, the advertising industry, creative industry, um, it made great sense for the local chapter of the American Advertising Federation to help support and extend the reach of this platform that we're trying to share with more creatives who are obviously generally the folks that work for creative agencies. So. Um, like to have Mr. Jacob Benefield, our current president of the American Advertising Federation local chapter, share a little bit about what you guys do and what you have coming up here. Yeah, sure. Um, so my name is Jacob Benfield. I'm the president of our local AAF chapter for Broward and Palm Beach counties. Um, what AAF does is we advocate, um, you know, educate and connect the creative community around the advertising and marketing space. You don't have to be an advertising and marketing uh, in order to be a member. Um, we have members from all different types of professions um, who just have an interest in our community. Um, and right now, we are in the process of hosting a series we call Let's Make Lemonade, which is designed to help area businesses recover from the current recession um, and pandemic, as well as helping educate uh, our members on lesser understood elements of advertising and marketing, like throwing a virtual event or um, polishing up your SEO approach, things like that. Um, I would welcome everyone to um, go to aafsfl.org to sign up for our newsletter or follow us on um, on Facebook, Instagram. It's just AAFSFL. Um, and you can uh, find out about all of our upcoming events and what we have going on. Um, I would also welcome you to uh, hit us up on any of those platforms. Uh, if you're interested in volunteering, getting involved and in helping us uh, grow programming like Creative Zen uh, and like the other things we're working on, um, we're always looking for um, folks to help us make what we do even greater. So um, that's all for me. I'm glad and, you're all here. And, and Jacob, uh, if, you, if you would just be so kind to share, one of the upcoming events and workshops uh, came from, as a result of uh, Creative Zen. Could you just share a little bit about uh, what we have going on with Asia? Oh, yeah. Um, that's a really good one. So. Uh, thanks for the reminder, Evan. We have a really, really cool event uh, happening next weekend, um, which is um, a writing workshop with Asia Sampson. Uh, Asia Sampson is uh, a poetry artist, a spoken word artist, who ha was a previous host of Creative Zen. Uh, he got his uh, kind of start or his ascendance to fame um, on HBO's Deaf Poetry Jam. Uh, and now he works as a professional uh, spoken word artist. We have Asia coming in to do a writing workshop, a writing intensive workshop, um, next Saturday morning from 9 a.m. to 1 p.m. Uh, you can get all of the details on Eventbrite. Um, I'll put the link in our chat so you guys can just go straight to the event page. But AAF is eating a lot of the cost of that event because we want it to be available to everyone. So it's $10 for members and $40 for non-members, which is an amazing deal to, um, to work with Asia and go through this workshop called Find the Poem, where he helps you tap into your life experiences to create beautiful works. Um, we're really excited about it and we hope to see a ton of you guys there. It'll be a blast, I promise. And Asia, a very well put, Jacob, and we're very uh, grateful for uh, your leadership and um, the direction that the current chapter of the American Advertising Federation is headed in. Uh, this is great programming. Uh, Lemonade and the Hackathon is great programming. Um, 
being able to extend the reach of Asia, who previously worked in the agency world as well, aside from his spoken word experience, uh, just gives more value to our members, to the creatives in the community, and to other people who might want to learn creative writing, but might not have had the opportunity, A, to learn in school or otherwise, and B, learn it from somebody like Asia Simpson. So um, these are some of the opportunities. Uh, Jacob just dropped the uh, URL in the chat. We'll share it later. Um, so we'll keep you guys informed. And we thank Jacob, uh, Vanessa, Grazi, uh, Grazi, Josh, Andrew, everybody on the uh, American Advertising Federation team. This is a completely free volunteer effort. Uh, AF is a, a local nonprofit. So we just want to thank them very much for their support in making this happen. Um, we want to thank Vanessa for helping us uh, recently uh, select these speakers that are a little bit outside of our normal local reach since we're now doing this online and virtually. We can bring in um, a noteworthy accomplished speaker from another market virtually uh, as we're doing this morning, which we're very excited about and continue to give our community front row access virtually via Zoom uh, to these brilliant minds that will hopefully uh, either entertain you, if not inspire and, and empower you to connect and engage and maybe do great things in your community. So we're, we're really, really grateful for the uh, American Advertising Federation team, hence the AAF part of Creative Zen for those that were wondering. And can I just jump in really fast and just say to everyone that comes every month, if you guys just go on to um, a, like our LinkedIn page or Instagram or anything, if there are speakers that you guys are interested in hearing from, we can use your help. We need the community's input into, you know, just anyone you know that might be inspirational. Um, it can be local, it can be national, but I'm happy to reach out and find them. Most people I find are like very excited for the opportunity, but we'll tell you guys that I am not a native South Floridian. I'm actually from Cincinnati, which is how I know Doug here. Um, so I don't have those kinds of connections in this uh, area. So I could really use your help. I'd love your input. I'd love to bring whatever kind of programming you guys are interested in to you and I'm happy to facilitate it, but I could really use some just uh, connections and go-tos and that would just be a super great help. And especially I see a lot of faces that come, you know, every month and I just love that. So I want to make sure you guys are getting, you know, quality programming from our end. That's what we're here for you. And tell them who you are and what you do. Oh, I'm Vanessa Dahl. I'm a partner at Fresh Made, uh, which is a design and branding agency here in Deerfield Beach. And I'm also the chair of programming newly the chair of programming here at AAF SFL. And I'm very in my morning Friday look here. You're so. great. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, like still in pajamas, so <laughs> don't judge. <laughs> no, no, we don't judge and it's the Zoom world. Uh, yeah. Vanessa, thank you very much. Um, she's been, she's been uh, phenomenal in helping us facilitate some of these uh, really phenomenal speakers. We, we did try it last month and since we don't have a, a, a huge audience, it would be kind of nice to get a perspective of just if everybody can give a quick intro of um, what's your name, uh, where you're located, and either what you do or what you like to do uh, creatively, if it's your profession or not, uh, just so we can kind of get a feel for who's in the room and then we'll make the intro and have uh, Doug start his presentation. Uh, Jacob, if you wanna maybe start it off. Yeah, um, I'm Jacob Edenfield. Uh, my day job is uh, I'm an associate creative director at Starmark, which is uh, an advertising firm in Fort Lauderdale. Um, I also teach advertising, copywriting, and concept at the uh, University of Miami and volunteer as the president for a local AAF chapter. I know there's not an easy way to pass this off. Um, we're going to have Doug speak in a minute. So I guess uh, next, uh, Denise Tucker Creations. Um, hi, my name is Denise Tucker, and um, I've uh, recently taken on um, the uh, space, uh, empty, empty space. Zero spaces. What's that? Zero, Zero spaces, yeah. And I uh, love my, uh, my art studio. I'm an artist, and I also teach uh, a class on Sunday. I love to teach art and inspire people, and I noticed that Christine is here. She's one of my students. She's amazing. amazing. And, uh, yeah. you know, it's a small world. And, we can uh, definitely help people connect, and um, that's why we want to do the intros. There's a private message feature uh, yeah, on Zoom, if you didn't know. So if you guys are interested, please don't hesitate uh, to connect with somebody. The next person you might recognize uh, was a former speaker, 
Um, Mrs. Lori Pratico. Mrs. Lori Pratico. Ms. Hi, <laughs> I'm Lori Pratico, obviously. Um, I am a, I'm here in Fort Lauderdale. I'm sitting in my studio, which I am a resident artist at ArtServe. Um, and I am executive director of a nonprofit called Girl Noticed, where I travel the United States doing large scale murals of girls and women that are nominated from their communities to be noticed. And if you go out in Fort Lauderdale, you've probably seen my murals in restaurants and bars and salons and all kinds of places. So look for my name, Lori Pratico, or look for my style. Um, you can. Or if you want to hear the talk, we have Lori's talk as do we have all the other previous speakers talks um on our youtube our facebook page lori's happened to have been one of the better ones that we had uh <laughs> and, we, and we appreciate her turning in um he has we're to gonna... say that because i'm here <laughs> he just up the ante for you doug <laughs> uh sandy and, and for the sake of time we'll just keep it to um uh, your name where you're located and either what you do creatively or what you like to do creatively Yes, hi, good morning. My name is Sandy. I'm in Cincinnati, Ohio. I am a concierge for Circles, which is a uh, worldwide organization. Their headquarters is in France. Their, um, their parent company of Sodexo, which some of you might have heard in the uh, art world. And um, creatively, I just love to uh, listen to live music. Nice. All right, thank you very much. Is it Nico, Nico Chan, Nico Chan? Oh, mute. We'll come back to you. Uh, Vicky, uh, Vicky Rosenthal. Good morning, everyone. Um, I'm Vicky Rosenthal from Fort Lauderdale, Florida. I'm a visual artist and I create uh, social impact messaging on ethically responsible materials and I was a part of the AAF um, uh, lemonade make lim, lemons out of lemonade hackathon and it was um, so helpful for my business I was so glad to have the opportunity thank you very much it looks like we have a second Douglas Myers oh um, my name is Tom Kinzel I'm, I'm working with Doug on his cartoon project okay studio computer that's why it has his name on it I guess but that makes sense that makes sense so, um, and you're, yeah, in Ohio, you're in Cincinnati. Yeah, I'm in Cincinnati. Yeah. Okay. Well, uh, thanks for joining us this morning. Sure. Uh, Lori Arbell. Good morning, everybody. Lori Arbell. I'm also an artist from Fort Lauderdale and a teacher. I love um, inspiring through positivity and deep reflection, even in the dark spots, you know, that turning, shifting things from negative into positive. So, Amen. Cheers. Very well put. Thank you very much. Uh, Christine? Hi, I'm uh, Christine Heidich. I'm not sure I missed the very beginning of the meeting because I was on the phone. So um, I... It, Just, uh, who, you with the you are, who you are, where you're located, and what you do creatively or what you like to do creatively. Okay, great. Um, I'm in Lighthouse Point, And what I have just begun to do newly um, that I used to love when I was a child is drawing. So I, I joined, um, in fact, Tucker, who's on this today. I'm uh, part of her art class on Sundays on Zoom. And uh, that's been about four or five weeks now. So I have newly discovered myself as an artist again. And I'm already in the process of writing a children's book. So now I feel like perhaps I will be the one that illustrates it and not someone else. And you can get, probably get some good insight from Asia Sampson on the Creative Writing Workshop. So uh, awesome. good stuff. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, we have PAR projects. Hello, everybody. Uh, Jonathan Sears is the name uh, in Cincinnati, about two doors away from Doug right now. <laughs> I run uh, PAR projects, a, a local uh, arts and education nonprofit. Uh, creatively, we just do a lot of things. Very nice. Thank you. I'm glad to have uh, Cincinnati in the house. Uh, I know, Cincy Reprin. That's awesome. <laughs> that's, that's, that's what's up. Uh, next up, we have, we'll bounce, bounce to Fort Lauderdale, Amy Lee Elwitz. 
Oh, I think you're still on mute. There you go. Hi, good morning. Uh, I'm Amy Lielowitz. I'm a social worker with a clinical practice, but I've always gotten a, little, a lot of inspiration from creative people. Um, I'm in the midst of publishing an online course geared towards divorce for women going through a divorce called Girl, You've Got This, Rebuilding Yourself from the Ground Up. And I'm a published Amen. author. Amen. So, yeah, I'm inspired and, to listen to all of you. I'm a, I'm a bike rider. Yeah, I'm a cyclist. Well, we too. thank you for coming on the Choose Not Five Four bike ride last week. Thank you for showing up. It was great. Thanks for organizing that. Our pleasure. Our pleasure. Uh, Joshua, is it Josh Neville? It is. It is. Hi, everybody. It's been a little while. <laughs> I'm glad to have you. Joshua Neville. Um, currently, I'm pursuing uh, my bachelor's in urban and regional planning. I work with AAF. I work with Choose 954. I do search engine optimization, but my real thing is community. I honestly, I love all of you guys. I love seeing what you're doing. And, uh, you know, I believe you guys don't get enough respect out there in the world. So I'm here to really appreciate you as much as I can. Uh, and thank you for being here. And Josh does a lot behind the scenes as well on the AAF team and has volunteered uh, his time uh, also for Choose 954 to help with SEO stuff that is not our specialty. And that's one of the the things that happens when you're speaking with creatives through the AAF, you get connected to people that have creative skill sets. So thank you, Josh, uh, for your help. Um, Sally and O'Dowd, you just popped up. Just your name, intro, uh, just your name, where you're located and what you like to do. And you're on mute. Hi, um, happy Friday. Um, uh, my name is Sally Ann O'Dowd, um, big supporter of Choose 954. Um, I'm a journalist. I write for a WordPress e-zine on, um, about advertising and media and pop culture. And with Andrew Martino's help, we'll be launching Common Culture Media, um, a communications company supporting socially responsible brands. I just need to write my own copy. That's and we're going to help you out with that. Don't you worry. Thank you very much. Good Thanks. segue to, uh, to my business partner and former president of the AAF, Mr. Andrew Martino. Hey guys, this is Andrew. Um, as Evan mentioned, I'm uh, his current partner in, in, in kind of all, all of our inter, um, in initiatives uh, with Choose 984 and Unitas Group and everything else. Um, former president of AAF, now also the uh, fourth district AAF, which is a statewide um, organization, the program's uh, chair for that. And uh, really happy to see Creative Zen continue and um, the incredible, incredible job that um, Jacob and uh, the team have done. Um, I mean, I think this has probably been one of the, the most engaging boards I've seen with the club in a very, very long time. So um, I really, really appreciate it. Um, and I think it, it's been really, really beneficial for the entire community here um, in uh, you know, Byron Palm Beach. So uh, I just want to thank you guys and I'm really looking forward to hearing um, the talk today. Awesome. Thank you, Andrew. Uh, we wouldn't have been doing this if it wasn't for Andrew's dedication to the American Advertising Federation. So can't thank him enough. Um, uh, Kalunda, old friend, good to see you. Why don't you tell us a little bit uh, about what you do creatively, or like to do. Oh, I think she's on mute. We'll come back to her. Uh, Toby, Toby? And if you don't want to share, you don't have to share, no problem, uh, no, no, no requirement. I just want to try to get a uh, better understanding for who's here and then the collaboration or networking or whatever types of opportunities, connecting opportunities kind of come uh, as a byproduct later. Last one I think I have is uh, Nelly. Do you want to share? No problem. And uh, is Jacqueline still on? No problem. And last one is, and this is towards the bottom list, maybe they took the way, uh, Dylan Mobley. I'm sorry, I got caught off. <laughs> oh, no problem. <laughs> My name is Nellie Tejeda, everyone. Good morning. Um, I've worked with the, um, as a volunteer 
for the Broward Cultural Division um, doing grant evaluations. I have also taught fashion design and textile at the Art Institute uh, in Fort Lauderdale. I'm actually in Coral Springs and I'm just trying to get back into things. I'm um, currently working in admission and recruitment for a university, but I'd love to get back into the arts like Christine mentioned. So good morning and thank you for having me. Thank you for sitting on the grant review panels. I know that's very tedious work, but it's important <laughs> to determine where the money goes in the arts. So thank you for that. And uh, I think Dylan, uh, did you unmute yourself? Okay, no problem. Uh, I thank you guys for, for, for doing that. And you, you obviously can see the benefit of an exercise like that in a time like we're in now, where we don't have the connectivity and the engagement. This event was completely different in a previous world uh, where we were doing this for free every second Friday morning of the month in person with coffee, breakfast bites, hugs, high fives. Now, you know, the connecting and engagement period really is what made the event for a lot of people. The thought provoking talk is a, you know, is a, is a nice perk and byproduct. I just wanna remind you guys, we are able to connect and engage safely in times like now through Creative Zen, through the American Advertising Federation, through things like socially distant bike rides. We're all going through it together. We all have our own, you know, things that we have to deal with. Um, but, you know, you just saw that there's 20 something people uh, that have similar interests to you in your city or even in Cincinnati, Ohio, and even beyond the world as we've seen from some of our other speakers who were from Brazil and other places. Uh, so we just wanted to take this time. We're not taking the time away from Doug and we're gonna start to talk uh, right now, but you know we're here to support you guys to connect and engage. We're all going through it together. So uh, thank you everybody for for sharing. And without much further ado, uh, Doug Myers believes now is the time to pull the shiny lever on your creativity. It wasn't until he got into his 40s he says that he finally saw it clearly. There's never going to be a perfect time to switch gears and tackle his ambition. He says uh, this desire to create cartoons. He always thought it was weird and crazy. Like maybe I should ignore it, he says, uh, maybe be a rental car washer, a door-to-door -door political campaign worker, an apartment manager, or a market analyst, you know, being a real job. Uh, all those real jobs, he says, were actually training him for his dream job of running a cartoon studio. Skyvenger's Cartoons is uh, currently producing the cartoon series Ravens of Mars, which is based on his book um, with his studio based in Cincinnati, Ohio, uh, in this talk. Doug will discuss the importance of creativity uh, and where he believes it originates. He's gonna share some tips with you guys and exercises that can help you connect creativity. So without much further ado, we're very, very excited to have the real Doug Myers join us this morning. Well, thank you uh, so much. And I, I wanna um, thank Vanessa for inviting me. Thank you all, uh, AAF, for inviting me to come talk. This is um, actually something I'm really passionate about, as you can kind of tell from my bio. Um, and as you can hear from my bio, I actually have had a love-hate uh, relationship with my creativity my whole life. Um, I've always had sketchbooks since I was like 12 years old, and I still have every single one of my sketchbooks that I filled up. Um, and, you know, creativity is something that was always, I always felt like was free of like, oh, you're creative, that's nice. So what are you really going to do with your life type, you know, conversation? And, uh, you know, for those of you in the creative, I'm sure a lot of you have probably had similar experiences. Um, it's really inspiring to me to, to hear all of your uh, stories and hear how creativity uh, affects your life, whether it's, it's something that's central to what you're doing or whether it's kind of on the peripheral of your awareness. Um, actually, you know what? I'm going to ditch this chair. I hope you don't mind. I'm going to get up and speak because uh, I just get so... So much energy when I talk about creativity. Um, so the thing about creativity is um, creativity, when I talk to people about it, you know, throughout my life, and I've, I've said, yeah, I'm an artist, and I, I write, and I, I, I'm making, you know, my dream is to start a cartoon studio. But it's like, the, the thing that people always respond to with creativity or imagination is, well, I can't even draw a, a stick figure. And um, that always kind of resonated with me, you know, because people, I don't think I always have an idea of what creativity is. Um, and then it's just occurred to me that there are people who just, who, who don't, who are very process thinkers and that's great. Um, and, but creativity just doesn't touch them. And I just, that just, when I realized that it boggled my mind, uh, because for me, what creativity is, is 
Creativity is the mind's eye that sees the possibility in anything. Um, it's not just about drawing. It's not just about uh, writing or making music. Uh, creativity is also about um, how do I um, how do I get out of this traffic jam and get to work in the next 15 minutes? Or uh, wow, I, I really had a fantastic lettuce wrap. I, 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 how I wonder if I could make it. I wonder if I could recreate that. Um, so there, creativity is really an opportunity to kind of step outside of what we're used to and look for new ways to uh, do something or express something. Um, so um, anyway, and to get you all kind of in touch with creativity for a quick second, I'm, 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 I have this idea for an exercise I'd like to try. Um, and if, if you're on, if you don't have your camera on, uh, I, I would like to invite you to turn your cameras on and we're gonna do a little bit of an exercise because it'll, it'll really make sense once we do this. So, what I'd like for you to do is take a moment and look around where you are, because I'm pretty sure that all of you, unless you're breaking into somebody else's house, you're in some place that you're very familiar with. This is your, you know, your office or your, uh, you know, one of the rooms in your house, and you're, you know, you're pretty familiar with it. And you may not, you know, this might be an area that you're so used to that, you know, creativity just doesn't come to you naturally. How many, am, I, am I kind of on board with that? Can I see a show of hands if that's kind of resonating? So, okay, so cool. Well, what I'd like for you to do, to give you an idea of how creativity can be turned on, I want you to take a look at the other people on camera, and I want you to look through and pick out somebody who has what looks like a really different space, a creative space. So some, it doesn't have to be... You know, it doesn't have to look like a scientific uh, laboratory or anything, but take a look at people's spaces and um, pick one frame, one person, and I want you to imagine that when I reach for my key keyboard, I'm gonna hit the magic zoom button, and it's gonna put you, transport you to somebody else's computer in somebody else's room. So I'm about to hit the button. I want you to take a good look at where you're going. Now close your eyes for 10 seconds. And imagine where you're about to go. And I'm about to hit the button. Zap. Okay, now I want you to imagine, just based on what you saw very briefly, imagine what that room in front of that keyboard looks like. What's around you? What pictures are on the wall? What's, what's an important item that's on the bookshelf near you? What, uh, what do you smell? Does it smell like bacon and eggs? Maybe it smells like coffee? Maybe it smells like something that was, you know, you know, lemon scent fresh because they just cleaned. What is it about that space that draws your eye? And I want you to imagine that you're looking around the room and you see one object from that room on the shelf. What is that object? You all have in your, you all have it in your, uh, your mind. Okay. Now open your eyes. And. I'd love to hear what your reactions are. You can type it in the, uh, the chat. I want, I want you to just come up with what you found. So, and I'll just keep going. The reason why that uh, I wanted to do that exercise is because now suddenly you weren't in your original space. You were somewhere else. And that is what creativity can do. Creativity can take us away to anywhere. It's, it's, it's the mind's way of creating uh, memories that never existed. It's almost like memories in reverse. So um, let's see here. We see, oh, a box of paintbrushes. I love Nicole's blue wall, very vibrant. I saw Neary Street's portrait painting in Lori Pratico's studio. Oh, cool, cool. Wow, we have really observant, uh, some observant uh, observations there. So very cool. So that is what gives you an idea of what creativity can do. And um, as I said before, it's really inspiring to hear that um, you all have been touched by creativity in some sort of way. And you know that the world is just so much more interesting with creativity. Um, I, I saw something on Facebook the other day uh, that I reposted and it said that, um, you know, while you're sitting at home, binging your fifth Netflix uh, show or you're listening to music, remember to thank an artist. And I thought that was really fascinating because especially now when we have the opportunity to not just walk in the world, but we have the opportunity to, it's almost like telepathy. We can almost, or, or astral projection, we can, with te through technology, astral project ourselves 
just somewhere completely different. And we can experience things that are completely new to us. And that is how I see cre sharing creativity is, is so, um, such an important force of, of nature. It's something that we get to do. Um, so uh, let me see a show of hands. So how many of you consider yourselves to be like epically creative? Like this is, this is why you wake up in the mornings. This is what you do. I see a couple of hands. Yeah, a few more hands going up. How many of you, oh wow. How many of you feel like you're familiar with creativity and you just wish that you could just you know, grab it, bottle it so you can just, you can, you can access it anytime you want. How many people just feel like I, I like creativity. I wish I was more creative. I want to get there. Okay, I see a couple more hands. Um, hold on a second. I put on the magic lamp helmet lampshade in dog's room and zoom to Cincinnati. That is awesome. That is the, that is the best answer I have read. <laughs> Dixie elf statue. Wow. Okay, cool. Oh, set of drumsticks. Yeah. I saw somebody had a, a drum set in the background there. And I thought that was pretty awesome. Yeah. So do you, now I just have a quick question. Do you, do you, when you're trying to get creative, do you sit there and bang on some drums for a while? Is that how you kind of connect with creativity? With, <laughs> I uh, I play the drums whenever I can. I play when I'm tired uh, and it'll give me energy. Um, yeah, so I don't okay. really play to get creative, just get get energy. Oh, that's cool. That's cool. Well, that's definitely part of it. Well, today um, I'm here to give you you know some ideas on how to connect with creativity. The thing about creativity that I've learned is that creativity is not a nine. To, it doesn't follow business hours. It's not nine to five, and. I found that that's, it's, it's both really cool because I'll be uh, sitting, um, you know, at home and, you know, having dinner with my family and then all of a sudden I just have to get up and write something down or I'll wake up in the middle of the night and I have to get up and write something down. Um, I've also been known to take a sketchbook to a concert and just sketch, you know, people on stage. Um, so creativity doesn't really follow the nine to five model like our career minds have been trained that it has. So. That's cool, but then at the same time, it's also a problem because when I do get to sit down and work on a project, and I'm like, okay, I'm gonna be creative, here we go. And it gets that silent. It, you know, creativity doesn't always show up on command. So I've spent a lot of time looking for ways to, how do I connect with creative, creativity? What do I do when I wanna create something? I have all this time, I finally got the house quiet, the dog stopped barking, the kids have stopped bickering, everything's quiet, now I get to sit down and focus, what am I doing? So I've started developing um, some ways to uh, connect with creativity, some ways to, um, to, to, to pull it out of the, dark, the back research, recesses. Um, Elizabeth Gilbert, who was a writer, did a really good TED talk about creativity, and uh, she was the one who wrote, if I make sure I got her name right, she was the one who wrote Eat, Pray, Love, and one of the things she said about creativity was she was talking about a, uh, a poet who was a farmer. She would go out in the fields and she described getting creative inspiration like this. She said that uh, here was this poet who was out on the fields and there would be a rumbling in the distance, like, like there was a storm coming. And the rumbling would get closer and closer and closer. And if she didn't, she knew it was a uh, creative idea. And if she didn't run back to her house get her book, write down exactly what was coming, that as soon as it passed overhead and it left, it would go touch somebody else. And that's almost, I really identified with that. That's how creativity is. There have been so many times where I've had a great idea, uh, a portion to a manuscript that I wanted to write, or a cartoon uh, scene that I wanted to do, or a drawing I want to make. And I'm like, yeah, I'll, I'll draw it in a few minutes. I'll just put it in my mind. And then when I go back to it, it's gone. So one of the things, um, that I would say that uh, is really important if you want to get in touch with your creativity is get yourself a notebook, a sketchbook, um, a writing tablet. It can be as big as a regular sketchbook. It can be like a small, you know, writing notebook. I'll show you one of the ones that I have. This is the one I keep with me. It's a moleskin. It's pretty good. It was like, I don't know, 18 bucks. I also keep my mask in it. So it's also a good mask holder. Um, and I keep it with me. And sometimes I just, I write down a sentence or I write down a, a, a weird name that I thought might make a cool character. And um, it's always really good to have that um, notebook. The, uh, one of the things that I want to point out about creativity is that about uh, creativity is about new perspectives and new experiences. 
And the best way to connect with creativity is to do something new. Take a look at things from a new perspective. If you've, uh, you know, I'm sure back when we were all working in offices or, you know, in schools, whatever, there were, there were always that, that one woman who came back from her vacation with the cornrows in her head, or there was uh, the guy who came back with the uh, shark's tooth pendant. And for the first two weeks that they were back, they were like, I'm connected with everything. And, you know, yeah, I'm getting some laughs in there because, and, and that's funny, but that is a person who's been touched by a creative experience. That is somebody who's been removed from their everyday experience. They completely shut off all their preconceived notions about what is life supposed to be. 8.30, I'm up. 9 o'clock, I'm out the door. 10 o'clock, I'm battling traffic. 10.30, I'm in a staff meeting. They've shed all those experiences, and it was 8.30, I'm sitting on the beach, I'm watching the sun, you know, nine o'clock i'm going for a swim and when you take yourself out of the the experiences that you're so used to you're opening yourself up to a creative experience that's why vacations are so powerful that's why every single time i see a truck with a, or a car with a the bumper sticker salt life attached to it i'm always like yeah hang with it you know like keep keep going because you know that's something that we get to take with us now, as you all know, that kind of, uh, you know, about two or three weeks afterwards, the corn rows come out, and, you know, the guy's no longer wearing the shark's tooth pendant, but, but I'm sure they still have the, the yeah, I'm sure that guy still has the shark's tooth pendant somewhere, you know, and I'm sure sometimes he picks it up and he's like, oh, man, I remember, that's great, but I'm not going to wear it because that would be too weird. Well, I would invite you all to pull your shark's tooth out of your closet and put it on, wear it, because that's where you're cre you'll connect with creativity. Um, so, um, you know, my experiences with creativity is that you can get back in touch with those creative moments when you have it. Um, one example is when I was in college, um, I took an art history class. It was the history of surrealism, you know, Salvador Dali and Marcel Duchamp and all these people who were just really weird and they, they really, you know, they tapped into their subconscious and their dreamlike um, ideas of what art is. And this class was at a, a zon, was at a, was 8.30 on a Friday morning, which in, in my school, we never took a class on, you know, Friday, because Friday was just kind of like the day off. And, and that was when you had to take a class. Most people were going up to the slopes at, you know, on Friday. So to be up at, in class at 8.30, studying surrealism was like a highly, it really was a great uh, experience. But I remember I'd go in there half asleep, probably half hungover, and there was a little coffee kiosk, and it, it was always dead because there was nobody around, and I'd always get a hazelnut coffee. So now, whenever, even all these years later, when I smell or drink a hazelnut coffee, it takes me back to history, and it takes me back to this idea of surrealism, and that's a powerful connection. And each of you in your lives has somewhere where you, had, where you were just living this experience whether it was starting a new school or whether it was um, just starting a new sport or whether it was um, starting a new job and everything felt fresh and new. And there were smells and there were sights. There was like maybe sunshine, you know, the feeling of summertime. And if you can figure out what those experiences are, and for a moment, I'd love for you to each of us think about an experience, um, you know, take about five or 10 seconds. Um, and I'm gonna let you kind of think about that for a second. And if you can kind of imagine where you were, what was this experience? What was this feeling you had when anything was possible? And if you can think about it, who were you with? Where were you going? Did you feel like this was gonna be the beginning of your life? Did you feel like things were brand new? And if you'd like to put that in the, um, you know, if you'd like to put that in the comments, I'd love to hear some of your reactions, like what, what you were doing. You could say, you know, art history class, college, or you could say uh, first day of, you know, first day of high school or something along those lines. And feel free to put those in the comments. So those are all really good things that, um, you know, ways to connect with creativity. Now, um, in the time that I have left, um, I'd like to give you some ideas of creative exercises you can do to get in touch with creativity and to generate um, the third night of my landmark forum course. All right. 
Um, oh man, I missed the question. My son went by. Oh, um, <laughs> okay. It was, uh, the question was, do you remember a time when, when you were having a brand new experience and you felt like anything was possible? Like this could be the start of your brand new life. This could be like the start of a career or a change of a major or a new interest that you were always going to, in other words, what was your shark's tooth? What was, what was that, you know, thing that you put around your neck and you're like, man, I'm connected now and I'm going to live a totally different life. Um, let's see. I might like see. Oh, oh, okay. Oh, there's something about Jake being in the news. Cool. Um, so anyway, so those are, that's a, an opportunity to touch with, um, um, possibly any something big, the unknown is ahead. Yes, that is that actually what the, yeah, the concept behind it. Um, oh, sitting down in front of a blank canvas. Wow, that is a broad horizon. I, I understand that feeling. That's, that's a great feeling. Like anything is possible on a canvas. I mean, you can do a masterpiece. You could just throw paint at it. You can, it, anything can happen. Um, so anyway, I'm going to switch gears. I'm going to uh, give you an idea of, um, of some exercises, things you can do to kind of start that spark. Uh, w one thing is, um, this is one thing I like to do, dress the way you feel. Take a day and wear something that you haven't worn in a while. The crazier, the better. Maybe it's what you wore for New Year's Eve one year, or maybe it's um, a bridesmaid dress, or maybe it's a black suit that you haven't put on. And put on something that you not normally wear, and then go somewhere you've never been before. Like go to a restaurant or go to a coffee shop that you've never been to, or take a walk in a park. Do something different, and it's going to feel weird, and it's good. you're going to feel self-conscious. Fantastic. That's what you want to do. But as soon as you get done feeling self-conscious, then you begin to see that your, your perspective on things have changed because people maybe look at you differently because you're wearing something really cool. Uh, you're, you're, um, you're, you're walking differently because you're wearing different shoes. Um, that all sparks a shift in your day-to-day -day, um, persona. And you get to be a different person. Um, to give you an example, my next one, uh, my 10-year-old uh, told me that she wants me to wear makeup for day. So uh, she said, Daddy, I'm going to put makeup on you and make you walk around all day wearing makeup. And I'm like, all right, I'm down. I'm totally going to do it. So, you know, that's way outside of my comfort zone um, because I never use more, anything more than foundation. But, um, but I think this, it'll be a good opportunity. As a matter of fact, this morning she was like, you're doing your talk today. Today's the day you should wear makeup. And I, I was like, yes, I should totally do that. But I'm not going to. I totally went down. So, but the point is, at some point, that will happen. Um, the other thing you, you can do to connect with creativity, this is um, something that somebody told me, and I, I do it, and it's so much fun. Um, you take two pieces of paper, and, and feel free to write these down. And if you miss them, I've got my email address. I, would, I, can, I, know I invite you guys to connect and say, hey, what were those suggestions again? Because I actually um, would love to connect with you. Um, one suggestion is take two pieces of paper, tape them on a table, get two different colored magic markers, and draw circles with both of your hands at the same time. And that is an amazingly tactile way of connecting with creativity. Um, you can draw circles, and then you can try and draw like triangles. And once you kind of get over the mechanical awkwardness of it, it's really a lot of fun. It's kind of like composing marks on a paper. Um, it's like being a conductor of a symphony with, with, uh, with a marker. Um, that's a really fun thing to do. Um, and what that does is it connects the two parts of your mind, the analytical part, the process part with the creative part, and it, and it creates more balance. Um, so that's a really good exercise. Uh, another fun thing to do is to um, tap into your dreams. Um, how many of you remember your dreams some of the time or most of the time? Does anybody out there? Okay. Okay, one person. All right. I know a lot of people say, oh, I don't dream. I don't, you know, I, I never have dreams. Actually, we all dream, but we just forget about them, especially if you're the type of sleeper who wakes up and then goes back to sleep. Once you wake up and you go back to sleep, you're kind of clearing the slate of your dreams. So when you wake up and you have this dream in your head, keep, keep your, your journal, your sketchbook by your bed. 
this is why I never, I'm never more than like 10 feet away from my sketchbook. I, I never know what I'm going to be writing down. Write down your dreams um, when you wake up and when you first remember that. Now, if you have problems remembering your dream, there is, an, there is something that I was told uh, that you, you can do to actually start programming your, your dreams to come in your mind. In the middle of the day, here's how you remember your dreams. In the middle of the day, just at some random point in the day, ask yourself out loud, out loud works really well. And it doesn't care, it doesn't matter if anybody else is in the room, that's, that's even better. Ask yourself, am I dreaming right now? Ask yourself in the middle of the day if you are dreaming. And what that does is that actually triggers your, your self-conscious to be aware of your dreaming and when you're, when you're actually having dreams. And if you do that, you know, a couple of days in a row at random points, and you ask yourself in the middle of the day, am I dreaming? You, your, your dreams will start coming to you. Now the trick is once again, if you wake up in the middle of the night and you had a dream, sit up and think about your dream for a few minutes and even write it down or sketch it. And that, that will help you to, to keep your dreams in mind. Um, another thing is, um, as I said, keep a journal. Um, and, I like to try and enter something and, you know, keep a different journal for sketching or writing. Um, and I just write, I try and write something down every single day. Instead of posting on Facebook every single day or every minute, try posting something, writing something in a journal. And it doesn't have to be explicit. It doesn't have to be a long entry. It could just be last night I dreamt that I was stuck in the middle of a 10 foot taco. You know, like it could just be something completely random and crazy. Um, and then you can draw that taco and then, you know, and then suddenly a creative idea takes on a life of its own. Um, the other thing is, uh, the other idea is uh, exercise. I heard somebody saying that they were, they get into uh, cycling. They got into cycling and that's kind of helped them. Um, also playing the drum. I mean, you know, that's, you know, all the drummers I've seen, it's, it's like exercising. It's just, you know, getting energy and going and just breathing and connecting with your breath and um, pumping oxygen to your mind and just, you know, shoving, you know, that helps to free, you know, things that block you, um, such as everyday concerns or, um, you know, the checklist of everything you have to do between making dinner or figuring out what's for dinner because, you know, six o'clock, what's for dinner? And, um, you know, it, it, it helps you to kind of step away from that. So exercising, filling your lungs, empty your brain, just letting yourself relax for a little bit. Um, another thing, this is going back to your journal, just scribble some clouds, make, make wonderful clouds. Um, just draw clouds and let your mind go blank while you're creating. Um, if you color in clouds, um, I invite you to make clouds, not using the color blue and not using the color purple. That's a challenge. Um, and then I would, I would invite you to, you know, make a color, take some markers or colored pencil, make a drawing of something that is uh, like trees, but don't use the colors brown and don't use the colors green. Um, and, and then, um, as I said, the last thing is try something new. Try a new food. Um, go to a restaurant. Here's a fun exercise. Take your sketchbook, go to a restaurant, and when the server goes, do you, have you decided? Tell the server, no, I haven't decided. I would like you to pick out what I'm going to eat today. And if you have any dietary restrictions, you tell them, it's like, I, I don't eat, uh, I don't eat fish. But other than that, I want you to pick something on the menu. Don't tell me what it is and just bring it to me. And for extra credit points, when they bring it to you, close your eyes and try eating it without figuring out what it is. That is taking you outside of your comfort zone. It's kind of fun. And you can also, that's also a fun thing to do on date night. As a matter of fact, I think I'm going to, we're going to do that on a date night next time I'm on on date night. Um, so those are a few things that um, you can do to, to touch base with your creativity. Um, now, um, before I open it up to, you know, anybody who wants to share, um, I do want to say that for you guys, because I'm so grateful for you guys for inviting me into your, uh, your, your boxes, um, I have something for all of you. Um, I've actually put together, I created a, uh, an actual a connection, a creativity connection little uh, PDF book. Uh, it's just a few pages. It's got a few exercises in it. And when I was thinking about this, when I was originally invited to do this, I thought to myself, boy, it'd be great if I could do a screen share, or, but it'd be great if they could. And then I came up with this idea to do this uh, creativity uh, connection uh, little workbook. It's, it's kind of like an activity book. 
Uh, it's a PDF you can print it out and you can uh, you know scribble in it and it has exercises and fun things you can do. So um, I'm gonna put in my email here and I would love to hear from you guys. Um, so feel free to email me and in the subject line you can put creative zen or creativity and uh, just remind me who you were and I will send you this uh, PDF attachment and you can print it out and just kind of have fun with it. Um, and it gives you a few of the ideas that I was just discussing and uh, you get to you know, touch base with your creativity because I would love to hear your experiences of like, hey, yeah, I tried these and you know, I really connect with creativity and now I'm writing that children's book or um, you know, now I'm, uh, you know, my, my journalism, I have some really great ideas for, I think somebody was saying that they're a journalist and um, they're doing, they're looking to do, develop their copywriting. So this is an opportunity. I'd love to hear how creativity, you know, whether this, whether this is, has affected you and, and, or if you have any suggestions about, hey, I also have this idea, you know, I've heard that this works. So, um, so that's, a, that's, um, that's really what I have. Feel free to email me. I would love to hear from you all. Um, and I'd love to, you know, take any questions or any observations, um, you know, is this landing for you? Um, does anybody, would anybody like to jump in with a question? Um, uh, okay. How about this? Um, let me ask, let me ask, pose this question out. Um, oh, here, I'll, as somebody asked what my email is, I'm going to post it again. I just posted it in the chat. Um, does anybody, um, how, how, let me ask a question. How do you want to use creativity? Can I throw that question out there? Is there anybody who would love to answer that for a second? I'm just kind of curious to know how it is. Um, if I'm missing anybody. All right. And, okay. Um, okay, so how about this? Um, does anybody have anything that they want to share in terms of, oh, thank you, Doug. Uh, presentation. Um, I didn't catch email either. It's, I just put it in the, oh, I want to use creativity to build my website. Oh, that's fantastic. Okay. Um, so Vicki, if you, if you care to share, like, what is it about your website that you want to use creativity to do? How, how can creativity um, help your website? Any other? Yes, I didn't know you wanted me to speak. I was typing. Okay. Uh, you want me to speak? Yeah, sure. If you're comfortable speaking, that's totally fine. Um, I'm trying, I want to set up a platform to invite people to share their stories of what drives, um, what motivates them, what is their story in reference to how they're going to create social impact, social change. And I feel like I'm at this, like, wall that is like the inspiration is there but I don't know how to use the creativity to bring people in to say yeah I want to put I mean I haven't even started the website because I don't even know where to start with it in reference to creating right. that platform okay um, one suggestion I would I always take is starting the way I start on a creative challenge whether it's um, you know writing or whether it's composing a, a creative cartoon scene, is I don't I do it. I put it out of my brain. I actually um, do anything but that. Um, and so, like for instance, behind me is this painting I've been working on. It's been on my easel for like a year, and I've been stuck on it. And now it's not the focus of my attention. My, I work on the painting to actually, uh, and it's, it's uh, basically the Minotaur on guitar and it's Medusa. It's like if the Minotaur and Medusa were in a rock band, um, I just had this crazy idea. And I'm like, that's crazy, I wanna paint it. Um, so I paint the labyrinth in the background. And so when I sit down and I actually have a project that I'm working on and I can't think of how to get started, I, I put it out of my brain and I go immediately to this painting, which I've just now started working on for the first time in a year. And it's helping me to, to get into a mindset because after a while I feel like this is going great and ideas are coming to me and okay, now I can sit down. You know, sometimes our creative, the solutions we're looking to creatively, they're like a big blind spot in front of us. When we try and look at it, all we see is a dark spot. But when we take our focus off of it and we're doing something else creatively, it'll come to us, you know, it might, that's why people are like, I do my best thinking in the shower, or I do my best thinking when I'm running, or I do uh, my best thinking when I'm cooking. That's why whatever the, the, 
whatever else is always is, is oftentimes a really good jump starter for creativity. So um, I would say, you know, keep a notebook with you, let your mind go, jump into a new experience or, you know, something else or go jogging and keep that notebook with you. And if you have even one flicker of a thought, write it down immediately and you'll be surprised at what that jump starts, that one thought. And, you know, when, when things like that happen, when you have an epiphany, one idea, it's suddenly like rings coming together and then you can shoot an arrow through. Um, what was that, Jason and the Argonauts, that myth where uh, Jason came back after being gone for, you know, years and years and years, and his queen, uh, all these people were trying to get her to marry them because they thought the king was dead. So to prove that he was worthy of marrying his own queen again, he set up a competition, and they had these rings swinging on ropes, and he picked up a bow and arrow and shot the arrow through all the rings. When your creativity, when your idea of how to solve your website comes into focus, it's gonna feel exactly like that. But it starts with the first swinging ring. So sometimes you just take your mind, your focus off of it. So, wow. so any other, anything else? Anybody else wanna jump in? Oh, okay. Well, perfect. Um, so just to, you know, just to close, um, I really only scratched the surface of, of what creativity is and, and how, it, how you can connect with it. Um, and as I said, I've got that, uh, that special gift, that PDF book for you. Um, and I'd love to see you in an email and i you know, love to send emails. I mean, some of the things that you, you guys were talking about were absolutely fascinating to me. Um, I love, uh, your, you know, your work with social consciousness. Um, I feel like now is a really great time to kind of broaden our horizons and be more empathetic to the people around us because we're all part of the living community. Um, somebody else was talking about um, how they wanted to use positivity and creativity, um, and I just thought that, I, I don't know if that was Sally, I don't remember who that was, but uh, they were just saying that they wanted to use creativity, uh, positivity to, to foster creativity. Um, teaching is another great way to, um, to, to pull in creativity. Teaching kids, that I found, is teaching them what I know and seeing what they come up with is a great way. I've, I've gotten so many ideas from it. Um, so volunteering um, is a great way to tap into creativity. So those are all wonderful things, wonderful ways to tap into creativity. And um, uh, let me see if there's anything else I wanted to. Sure it, sure. it looks like there was a question in the chat oh. that you might have missed from Lori. Oh. She was she was asking about, are there any tools for looking back at your notes? She says that she has journals and journals, but doesn't really look at them. Oh, but, the, oh, but Lori, that is a great question. Um, the great thing is going back to your journals, that's the best part. Uh, when I go back to my sketchbooks that I did when I was 14, 15, 16 years old, I look back at it, my first reaction is always like, oh my gosh, my drawing style is so primitive then. And, but then I look back at the ideas and things I was trying to convey and it comes back to me. Um, if you remember where I was just talking about drinking that hazelnut coffee before art history and how that now when I drink it always takes me back. You're going back to your journals, that will take you back to your original thinking. And if there's, if there's one thing that grounds you creatively, it's who you were creatively years ago. So um, I would invite you to go back over your journals. You don't have to read through all of them, but if you open a book, one of your journals, and you come upon an entry and you leaf through it, I guarantee you, you're going to hit something that really resonates with you. And you're going to be like, wow, that, that was a great idea. And I still kind of have that in the back of my mind. And it might, it might really kickstart continuing thinking. Um, so think about those journals. Think about those journals as your life's work. How powerful is that? You're going back to your life's work. You're going back, you're, con you're connecting with, with who you were 20 years ago. And you might find that, yeah, some things have changed, but a lot of things are still the same. You still have the same drive. It just might be a little bit hidden for the moment. So, uh, I find the challenge is that I have a creative job, so when I work to work, want to work on my own content, I'm exhausted both physically and mentally and don't want to be on the computer anymore. Ah, that is the really, that's, yeah, I, I understand where you're coming from there, and it is. It's, it's difficult. Uh, when your creativity is nine to five and it's put into a box where you go into work and you put into a box, that's really, it's, it's difficult. It's difficult to have that same energy and drive. Um, 
suggestions would be take up a different medium. Get off the computer and, you know, once again, grab your sketchbook. Um, take a moment and take a, if you can take a lunch break and walk somewhere and just draw something, um, that'll really help you. The other thing that might help, try the circles, um, try the circles exercise. Try that a couple of times and see what that does in terms of reinvigorating you. Or uh, in the case of uh, whoever that was, uh, get a drum kit. Just start jamming out. <laughs> see what that generates energy. But um, in terms of the circles, what that does is drawing circles, hopefully what that might do is that might get you back into switching back and forth between process and creativity. Now that your creativity is your process, that might help you to kind of separate out of that and, it, you know, free your mind. Um, I kind of call those like, you know, like open, open brain um, exercises where you're not really creating something with intention. You're just taking a tactile experience and drawing like circles or you're drawing clouds or, um, you know, you're just, uh, one exercise is to draw 50 zigzags on a piece of, on a small piece of paper, but making sure that those zigzags don't touch. Those, those are all what I call open brain exercises where you're not creating something specific, but it kind of helps you to kind of clear out the clutter that you're using and that includes creativity and allows you to open your mind a little bit more to, to other creative um, opportunities. Um, so yeah, that was a great question. So, wow, okay. Uh, it, it looks like we're at 10 o'clock. Um, anybody else wanna chime in or ask a question? Um, well, once again, I want to thank you guys so much. Um, and once again, I'll drop my email one more time there. Um, I would love to hear from you guys. This was so cool. And um, definitely, I'm you know, be more involved with uh, AAF. Uh, consider me a new member. I'd love to. This was, this was absolutely so wonderful. And, you know, hearing from you, Vanessa, after all this time has been super cool. I really appreciate you reaching out. And uh, thank you for the opportunity. This has been so much fun talking to you all because creativity is just it's such a powerful force and it is so much fun when you, uh, when you, when you, when it, when it, you allow it to, to walk with you. So. And uh, thank you for, for taking the time. Uh, anybody that employs other creatives to do creative things is uh, obviously a friend of ours. I think people might've kind of not really understood the context that you have multiple people working for you doing creative things for creative business that's that's not unfortunately the case especially with comics in our market um, but that's what we're working very hard to change through the AAF and through some of our other community building initiatives and and trying to raise awareness about the creative economy and the importance of employing creatives uh, like what you're doing so from that from that context and from that side and from everything you shared uh, for everybody to benefit on this call. We really, really do appreciate your time and, um, and insight oh, for sure. Definitely. And um, one suggestion kind of on that note, um, one thing that I, that I do, and, you know, we're up here in Cincinnati, and Cincinnati is, it's come a long way, but it's still a pretty conservative town that really kind of looks on creativity as if it's just like, oh, that's nice, Tim, you go do your art thing. Um, one thing that I, I really press upon my creative friends is, you know, there are a lot of them like, hey, you make music, I make uh, logos, how about we just switch, uh, you know, we switch services. I always encourage people not to do that. Um, I encourage people like, if you want somebody to do a logo for you and you can't, you know, you don't have a ton of money, pay them anyway. Pay them 20 bucks, pay them 50 bucks, even if it's not what they're worth. Pay them, I don't even care if you pay them a dollar. Because the importance of that is you're showing people that their talents are worth money, even if it's not what they deserve. Because at least if somebody gets $10, they feel like they earn that $10. Um, and even if you're gonna trade services, send the money back and forth. Because my vision on that is if enough creative people do things like that, then what we do is we create a micro economy among creatives. And then it shows the non-creative people uh, that we're serious about what we do. Um, and with Venmo and PayPal and all these ways to, you know, send money back and forth. I mean, that should almost, I mean, this time period was really made, even the pandemic, with everything going on with technology, this is the time period to be creative.
Amen. Well put. We appreciate your time. You can, uh, you can find this replay on our social media later after we upload it. And uh, you can find these talks every second Friday morning of the month for free. Thanks to the good folks from the American Advertising Federation local chapter of the Greater Fort Lauderdale and Palm Beaches. If you want more creativity, uh, please consider joining us for the Asia Sampson workshop. You can find all this uh, on the AAF uh, website, social media, Eventbrite, the internet, interwebs, and wherever uh, digital events can be found. Uh, from Jacob, Vanessa, Josh, Andrew, everybody, and myself, uh, we thank you very much. Oh, and uh, one last one that uh, there's a very interesting connection to Jacob. Uh, uh -huh. Please consider joining us for this event. Uh, we'll be sharing which Andrew and myself will be speaking at Boston Design Week virtually instead of physically uh, about how Ken and Art and Design Week and some of our initiatives with our Fort Lauderdale and Zero Empty Spaces uh, can change the way that we view cities and ultimately creatives. And uh, Doug, we're very big on the creative economy and we're very big on um, make, in the, my, everything you were saying and we're, we're trying to do, be great. Uh, I know there's good folks like Lori Pratico that you know support other creatives. We, she gave us a donation for this event you know, to keep it going, which we appreciate. So um, little things like this uh, can really move communities forward. Uh, so if you're available on the 15th from 4 to 5 p.m., uh, you'll get to hear some really interesting insight from Andrew and myself and uh, a, a partner of ours from a very, very big PR agency who helped us win a PRSA award for media tactics for some of the initiatives that we do from a public relations side with uh, the Art Week. Uh, and a lot of things you guys might not know that we do, uh, you'll find out about. So uh, things like this will uh, continue to come your way if you connect, engage, choose 954, tune in to Creative Zen and, and AAF and the programming that's available to you. I believe there's an AAF chapter, Jacob, in Cincinnati. There it is. Let's make it happen. Yeah. Amen. Anything else you want to add, Jacob? Uh, no, I just uh, hope to see some of you uh, next Saturday for the Asia Writing Workshop. Even if you're not, um, if writing is not your primary medium, uh, he, he said that this is an opportunity to tap into your stories um, in a way that is replicable in visual art, sculpture, you know, painting, whatever your primary medium, uh, this is a workshop to, to help you tap into the power of your own stories. So uh, looking forward to seeing you guys. Thanks, Jacob. Thank you, guys. Thank you for tuning in. We'll see you next one. Wow. Cheers. We did applause to Doug. Thank yeah. you. Thanks, Doug. That was wonderful. Thanks, Vanessa. Thanks, everybody. Yeah. Looking forward Have a great to week, from you guys. Happy Good Friday, weekend. everyone. Whatever day it is. Social <laughs> media, do the thing. Cheers. Thank you. Bye. I don't know what that is. Seems phallic. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Bye. bye. <laughs> On that note, have a great weekend. <laughs>